Hi guys, my name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with Royal Family International and School of Identity and Lifestyle. I know guys, it's been a while, it's been a minute. I haven't really been recording much because I've been doing the schools. We've been doing two schools a month and uh, it just gets really, you know, it goes really fast, you know. And uh, I know some people ask me, you know, what do you do at the school, Pete? It's kind of weird because it's a little bit different. Uh, let me explain it like this. Um, I've done all the schools. I've done the, I don't even want to say the names of the schools because I've done so many of them, so it's really irrelevant. Uh, and I realized that, you know, certain conferences, people come on, they talk for an hour, talk for two hours, they get everybody really hyped, you know, let's get everybody going, let's get everybody excited, you know, and we can do this type stuff. And then they jump on the flight, they leave, and people just kind of like, <laughs> and I did that. I did that for five years. I traveled the world. I did that. I was doing conferences and, and I love doing them. Don't misunderstand me. But I was like, Lord, something's missing. What's, what's missing? And really what's missing is the follow through, the hands on. And so what we do at the school is um, students come and we stay with them. And it's six days of just nonstop talking about it, answering questions, um, you know, a lot of people want to know why this happens, why that didn't happen. And so we're there with them. And then I get to express my life, my circumstances. You know, I can tell you how to do things till I'm blue in the face. And the reality is what I tell you and what you hear is not going to make a difference until you actually go out and have your own experiences. And sometimes a lot of us are afraid to have those experiences because we don't have people that will take us by the hand. And that's really what the school's about. Um, the school is about taking people by the hand and teaching them. So what I want to talk about today is speaking in tongues. <laughs> That's my favorite because there's a lot of people that want to speak in tongues. I know there's some of you watching right now saying, well, you know, it's not true. It's a bunch of lies. You know, it's just we don't believe in it. Those things went out in the past. Yada, 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 yay. That's cool. Everybody has an opinion. I have an opinion. You have an opinion. The whole world has opinion. The reality, opinions are just the way people think, their perception of the reality that they live in. So I'm okay with that. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. Apostle Paul had it. Peter had it. Jesus had it. Everybody had an opinion. When I say it's an opinion is the way they're thinking about certain things. Now, I know you probably said, oh, Jesus had an opinion. Uh, yeah because he was entitled to it. <laughs> so here's what I'm getting at. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, Pete, you know, scriptural, you know, scripture's truth and you can't have an opinion because truth is truth. And if you have an opinion, not everybody reads the scriptures, not everybody believes the word of God, not everybody knows God or believes in God. And so we speak to them, we say it's truth, but to them, it's their opinion. It, they say, that's your opinion. Until they realize what truth is, when they hear it, it's just an opinion. So we reveal truth to them in hopes that they'll take that in account. This is my opinion and this is what biblical truth is to me. And I know, you know, you're going to have an opinion whether you want to accept it or not. So at some point, you're going to have to deal with an opinion. So, yes, scriptural truth is truth. But people are still entitled to their opinion. And we don't want them to live based on their opinion. We want them to live based on biblical truths. And even when they're in biblical truths, they're still entitled to their opinions. So anyway, so people are going to have their opinions about what I'm going to talk about right now about speaking in tongues. And some say, well, you know, biblical truth says that, you know, it does, they do it this way. And biblical truth says this way. And, and, and blah, 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 blah. They go in circles all day long. So anyways, here's what I want to get at. We had some students here the other night and they wanted to speak in tongues. And I said, let's do it. And everybody's looking at me like, what do you mean let's do it? Let's just do it. Come on, let's do it. So here's what I told them before we even started. Okay. Now you got to understand that scripture says that the carnal mind is the enmity against God, which means that um, it's going to fight you on stuff when it comes to God. And guess what? When you want to pray in tongues, your mind is saying, I can't do it. So is that of God or is that the natural mind? Is that the carnal mind talking, right? So right away that thing's already talking like, oh, you're going to look stupid. It's not going to happen. How do we know? Blah, 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 blah. You got to learn to shut that thing off. The carnal mind, when it talks about, you know, the realities of God, it is not going to make sense. So here's what I told him. I broke it down in a way that's so simple. And this is it. It's all about relationship. 
You know, Jesus came so we could have a relationship to say, you know, you've been reconciled to the Father now. Come to him. And really, God wants to have a relationship with you. So really, the, the praying in tongues is between you and God. It's not between me, my wife, my brother, my sister, my son, my congregation, my pastor, my friends, and God. It's between me and God, right? So now God knows my heart, correct? Right? And it says that Jesus intercedes for you day and night, which means that Jesus is talking about you right now. Now, you may not believe that, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm really okay with that. So right now, Jesus is talking about you. Uh, Holy Spirit, his job is to train you and to teach you to be everything that you are in Christ in this world. So he's talking to God right now. And scripture says that Holy Spirit searches out the deep things of God. And the reason that is, is because Holy Spirit's job is to give them to you. Now, here's the amazing thing. We know that, that when we give our lives to Christ, that it's the Holy Spirit that changes us. So we're transformed, right? And we're also translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So we're a new creation according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. We all know that. We're now a new creation. So who does that? Okay. Holy Spirit does that. So... Uh, a lot of people won't agree with me about certain things. You know, you got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to have the Holy Spirit. And, and once you have the Holy Spirit, then your walk's just going to be amazing. And everything's just going to make sense. And everything's just going to fall off you. And you're just going to live in this world that's just, woo, everything's just perfect in your mind. That some cases that's so, in other cases, it's not. Okay, and you can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, I believe, somewhere around there. Uh, we know that the first, first Corinthian church, uh, they were carnal. Scripture says they were carnal, that they, um, they were babes. They were doing everything based from the carnal mind. They weren't spiritual at all. They were just messing up. I mean, read, read it. It's amazing. Read, you know, chapter 3 talks about their babies. He can't give them meat. He can only give them milk. They're, spirit, they're not spiritual. They're carnal. They're just, they're just a hot mess. You know, chapter 6 talks about, you know, the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God, nor fornicators, blah, blah, blah. So he's, he's, they're addressing all these issues at the first Corinthian church. Just, they're a hot mess. They're like the worst church ever <laughs> so anyways after he says all those things you know paul says you know but such were you you were this but you're not this anymore right and it's because you are now you've now been perfected basically by the spirit of god you know but here's what i want to get at um if you read chapter six i think it's 17 i believe it's somewhere around there somewhere in that area let me get my bible Why mess around, right? It's right here. Come on now. So, uh, guys, I'm a little different. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter seven, seven, uh, chapter 6, verse 17 says, But the Spirit, uh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we're joined to the Lord by one spirit. Uh, flee fornicators, every sin that a man does is without the, bed, the body, but he that commits fornication sinneth against his own body. We know that. Uh, here it is. Chapter 6, verse 19. Excuse me, let me correct myself. I make mistakes. Peter made mistakes. People make mistakes. That don't mean I'm a sinner. <laughs> you go make mistakes. Hey, did you know that when you make a mistake, it's not considered sin? The only time it's considered sin is if you're looking at people through the law, because according to the law, you can't make mistakes because you have to be perfect. So here it is. Chapter 6, verse 19. Know ye not? That your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, this is a letter to the Corinthian church. Now, watch this. Which is in you. I guess Paul didn't understand. I guess Paul didn't know what was going on. Because doesn't he not know that they're carnally minded? That they're carnal? That they're not spiritual? That they're living in the flesh? And they're doing all these things? And they're all corrupt and everything? And then yet here Paul says... The Holy Spirit is within you. That tells me that even though they were acting that way, it was still inside of them. Now, a lot of us will say, well, if you do these things, the Holy Spirit's going to leave. But here's what's cool about that. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. And if he leaves, who's going to teach you? Man, we know how good that works, right? <laughs> if we leave it all up to man to teach you spiritual things, we'll be in trouble. So, of course, he's not going to leave because the Holy Spirit teaches you that. Now, a lot of you will argue with that, and I'm okay. You're entitled to your opinion. I'm okay with that. So, here's what I'm getting at. So, Holy Spirit society, if you gave your life to Christ, because he's the one that transforms you, and this is what I want to get at. So, Holy Spirit's inside of you, and he uses your voice. 
So he's a spirit and he lives inside of you, right? Do you remember when you were born? Obviously you don't. I'm talking about when you were really born as a baby. Do you remember when they took you by the hiney and they said, and you start crying? Who told you to cry? Oh, it's an instinct. You start crying. Uh, that's because you have a sound that comes out of you. Wah, right? That's a sound that comes out of you. No one tells you to cry. You just cry. So you have a sound inside of you. Now, as a child, you weren't thinking, well, let me make this sound or let me just make sure I, it's nice and loud. No, it's, it's, it's something that's just natural. It's a sound that comes out of you. So now, let me break this down in a way that you understand. When we learned how to read, right, they had to create this system, right? A system of talking and reading so we could communicate, right? Animals don't have this system. Basically, they're around each other so long that they, they learn from each other. Bees, ants, bugs, dogs, cats. They're around each other, and so when they're being raised, they're learning how to communicate because it's communion, right? They're all together. Horses talk, birds talk, animals talk, but they don't have a language, right? They just know each other. They, they familiarize each other, and so they, they communicate, right? Because it's all about communion and being one with each other. We as humans, we create a language so we can speak. Right? So we write things down, we teach a child A, B, C, D, E, and then the sounds like cat is k, k, at, you know, like cat. You know, it's funny, you have to learn. Like you can look at a cat and say it's a cat, but then to teach someone to read cat, you gotta show it to them, right? So really we learned English, someone taught us that, whether we heard it or read it or we were in school, right? So now if you were to go to China, and they were to teach you Chinese and you didn't have it written on the wall and stuff and then you were just hearing it, you'd have to learn it by familiarizing yourself to it. But if you heard Chinese for the first time, you think it's a bunch of gibberish. But because they're talking to each other, you say it's a language because you're communicating, right? Here's what I'm getting at. God doesn't communicate with us the way we think. He doesn't, let me rephrase that. When we wrote the Bible, and, and believe it or not, guys, it's not just written in English. And first of all, it wasn't even written in English, right? It's just that we speak English, so we get the Bible in English. But somebody translated that. Now, you know, it's in Hebrew, you know, the Hebrew scripts. And, you know, Jesus didn't speak English, obviously. You know, he spoke another language. And if we'd have heard him speak, we'd have said, oh, he, he's talking gibberish. <laughs> so here's what I'm getting at, guys. When Holy Spirit speaks to us, he speaks with it in many ways, whether it be through the wind, whether it be through an animal, whether it be through a feeling, whether it be through a sound. He communicates with this, right? And so he's going to communicate with us on that level. Here's what I'm getting at. When you hear a song on the radio, you hear it complete. Here's the problem that we have with people that want to learn to speak in tongues. They say, well, it's made up. The language made up. You know, it's just sound, so it's not real because, you know, you're making up these sounds and you're making up these, it's not real. But guess what? The English language, somebody made it up. Somebody said A, B, C. Somebody made it up. Hey, that song that you hear on the radio, somebody made that up. Somebody sat down, started writing lyrics. Hey, you know, the percussion, the guitar, the bass, and all that, made up all of it. But it's not made up when you hear it because somebody created it. So the person that hears it is gonna determine whether it was made up or not, right? The movies that you watch on TV, before you see it on TV, there's somebody sitting there making it up. And where are they getting it from? From here. They're creating something in the natural realm. What if creating in the supernatural realm isn't from here? But it's from here. What's that sound like? <laughs> what if you don't have this in the way and it just comes out of here, right? So here's what I'm saying. When we speak in tongues, we're creating a language between us and God that no one else has heard because it's between me and God. So I'm working on my language between me and God through the Spirit, right? And that's between me and him. That's not between me and you. So you're not going to know what I'm saying, are you? Because if I wanted you to know what I was saying, I would say it in English. Right? Here's what I'm getting at. Speaking in tongues is your spirit speaking to God. And it's through faith. You have to believe that he lives in your heart by faith. And you speak out of this place. Now, it may sound like jitter-jatter and blah, blah, blah and goo-goo-gaga. 
But it's okay because that's you talking to God. Now your carnal mind is going to say, you're not talking to God. That's only because your carnal mind only speaks a certain language. And so it's been trained to speak that way. But what if you didn't have a language and you had to communicate? Have you ever seen a mute person speak? It sounds weird, but they're really speaking. But to us, we don't know they're speaking because they're making these sounds, right? But they're communicating. But because they can't speak, we don't say anything to them, do we? We don't say, oh, you're not really speaking because you're making these sounds, you know, this un 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 when they're talking. I know because I've been around people like that that I've prayed for, and they talk like that. They're like, un 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 and you're like, what are you saying? But yet, their father knows exactly what they're saying because they've been raised with them and they understand them. But to him, it's not gibberish, but to us, it is, right? This is what I'm getting at. When you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking out of that place that nobody else knows about because it's your place, it's yours in God. And I create my own language with God through the Spirit. And that's what speaking in tongues is, right? I have my language with God because it's me and Him and it's nobody else's. And so when I have my time with God and I'm praying in tongues, it's me and the Lord speaking and nobody knows what I'm saying. Right? And you, basically what happens is you get so used to doing it that you're, you learn to shut this off and now you can speak out of your mind. In your mind, you can think what you're saying. Like you can say, thank you, Jesus. I love you. Hallelujah. And something else is coming out because now you're so used to speaking out of this place that now your mind can be there too. So this is what I want to say to you. Okay? If you don't believe in speaking in tongues, I'm okay with that. I do it whether you believe in it or not. Now, whether you believe it or not has nothing to do with me because everything I do is by faith. Scripture says that as a man believes in his heart, it doesn't say in your heart, it says in his heart. So I speak out of God out of my heart, right? And Scripture says, let a man, let a man decide in his heart what he's willing to give. Out of his heart, not your heart. See, that's everybody else's heart saying, that's not tongues, that's not God, that's not of them. And that's between them and God. But don't allow people to tell you that what you're doing is not of God because the reality is they don't understand it anyway. You see what I'm saying? So I tell people, pray in tongues. Speak to God. I don't care if you're talking baby talk. It's funny because we can talk to a little one-year-old. And it's so cute, right? Everybody loves that. But if you do that to God, now that's crazy. <laughs> so anyways, here's what I'm getting at. You want to learn how to speak in tongues? You want to learn to talk to God out of that place? What's stopping you? I'm going to tell you. People are stopping you. The carnal mind is stopping you. All your carnal thoughts and all these ideas are stopping you. But the reality is you have something in Christ so amazing. And it's yours. Scripture says that <laughs> when you pray, pray as though you already have it. So how does that work when you pray in tongues? Oh, Lord, I want to pray in tongues. Well, you got to pray as though you already have it. That's so amazing because you already do. You have everything that pertains to life and godliness, and it's all in Christ. And when Christ moves in, he moves in with all his stuff, man. He moves all your stuff out of the way. He moves in. So let's say, well, Pete, how do I do it? How do I do that, Pete? How do I start? And this is what I do. I get around people. I want to speak in tongues, and I'll say, here's what I'm going to do. See, when you get around people in a church, they all sound the same because they listen to each other. Right? You go to a Pentecostal church, and then they sound a certain way. And then you go to another church, and they sound a certain way. They all sound different because they listen to each other, and they kind of mimic each other a little bit. Right? And then you have that one guy that prays by himself at home, and he sounds totally different than everybody else because he's been working on his tongue for a long time talking to God. And really, it's not what's coming out of your mouth. This was coming out of your heart. This was coming out of your heart. Right? The sounds is, is just you're making a sound, man. You're making a sound to God. Right? That's all it is, is you're making a sound. And you're, you're, you're doing it out of here and you're doing it out of, out, of, out, of, out of faith, out of Christ, out of who you are in Christ. And so if someone tells you, look, you're not praying in tongues, it's just sound, say, that's me in God's language. How do you know what I'm saying and what I'm not saying? Nobody knows. Right? Uh, only you and God know. That's amazing because it's between you and God. And it's so amazing because the carnal mind doesn't wrap his mind around it because it wasn't created to wrap its mind around it. It was created to be totally opposite of the carnal mind. So it, it can't even understand these things. They're spiritually discerned anyways. 
So what I do is I get somebody and I'll say, okay, um, just mimic me, right? Mimic me. It's funny, people say, how do you say mimic? Oh, you're not supposed to do that. I love it when scripture says um, that we're to model our walk, right? After Christ, so we're mimicking Christ. You know that, right? We're mimicking him, right? Make disciples, that's teaching someone to mimic Jesus because it's who we are, but we have to have a role model that's teaching us what that looks like, right? So if I'm saying mimic me and speaking in tongues, it's because really I want you to get comfortable with it so you don't feel crazy when you're by yourself. So you can say, hey, you know, me and Pete did this. We worked together and, and he was doing it and I was doing it. It felt kind of weird at first, but I'm over that feeling now because he's doing it with me and now I feel encouraged. And then I tell him, you just do this until you feel comfortable and then you just let it go. You can borrow my tongue till you get your own because really, I gotta be there for I gotta help you. Whatever helps you grow, I'm here. That's what a teacher does. A teacher helps you grow. It doesn't say, well, you know, that's not a God. You know, I don't, it's like, you know what? That's between you and God, really. And if I can help you speak to God, whether it be mumbling, whether it be goo goo gaga, whether it be humming, whether it be whistling, whether it be with drums, whether it be with a guitar, whether it be with art, whether it be with a pencil, with a pen, with a piano, with, with your skills, whatever it may be, you speak to God however you want. My job is to get you closer to Him. So if you want to speak in tongues and you want to get closer to Him, who am I to say that's not from God? Is Holy Spirit going to say that? Is Holy Spirit going to say that's not from God? Come on, man. Come on. That's crazy. We're, we got a lot of believers that don't believe nothing. You know, this changes, time's changing. So here's what I want you to do, okay? Send this video to someone. They may laugh, they may say it's not from God. You can have the naysayers anyway, but the reality is, that's the reality they live in. They can't wrap their mind around my reality. People come out here and they're like, man, your reality is just, but we got so much fruit in what we walk in that I can care less what you think. That's what I tell them. Well, I don't believe, I don't care. Don't wake me up, it's working. I'm cool. Hey, I'm fine. You can go be miserable on your own. I'm happy. I'm filled with joy. I got the spirit of the Lord in me, man. And if you wanna say it's not from God, hey, God bless you. I'm going over here. Why, because I don't need to be around that stuff, man. I got work to do. I wanna help people. I wanna set people free. I just wanna talk about it. I wanna be about it, right? That's the kind of people I wanna be around and that should be you too. Don't just talk about it about it right so here's what you do it's so awesome so here's what I'm gonna do and you can do this I'm not embarrassed I'm not ashamed of the gospel people are gonna see this video and laugh you know what I don't care because you don't live with me you don't have the relationship I have with God you ain't seen what I've seen you ain't been a 10 year crack addict you ain't tried to hang yourself three times Okay, you ain't been stabbed, you ain't been shot, you ain't been run over, you ain't ate out of trash cans, you ain't been homeless, you ain't been losing everything because of what the devil's done. So when you see me say, hey, I want to pray in tongues with you, and you say, remember this, okay, remember this, I do this for the glory of God. That's why I do it, because I want to set people free, because I know what the other side looks like. I know what darkness feels like. I know what it looks like. And that's why I do this. I do this because it's real. Darkness is real. But the light is even greater. We're the light. We are what the darkness fears. We're the children of light. We're the children of God. So if you get offended by this, I'm okay with that, really. I'm okay with that. I've been hit with everything, everything, everything. So I'm not even worried about it. So if this bothers you, I'm okay with that because I don't do this for you. I do this for those who want to grow. So really, I don't care less. I don't care less. You're going to have naysayers anyway. And I'm all right with that because I used to be one. I was a Southern Baptist youth pastor, didn't even believe in miracles. And here I am teaching a school. <laughs> oh, anyways, anyways, so here we go. You guys ready? So here's what we're gonna do. Borrow my tongue. Just borrow my tongue. You know, pause right here and, and write it down wherever the time's at, right? And I'm gonna do this with you, okay? Usually I start out with Abba, right? Abba means father. You guys know that, right? Right, Abba, Abba. I was amazing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll go slow, okay? This is a training video. Training video how to brand tongues. Right? Brand tongues. That's awesome. I could feel the Holy Ghost. I could feel the Holy Ghost. I have a ghost in the house. 
Holy Ghost in the house. My house haunted. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost in the house. Look, he. Oh, okay. Anyways. Anyways. I'm crazy. You all have no idea. I'm just crazy like that. But anyways, here we go. Ready? So here we go. Just mimic me. Just mimic me. Ready? Just mimic me. I'll go. Just. Okay. So we'll start out with Abba. So you ready? Anybody could do this. Even if you pray in a tongue. That's my bulldog. He's getting excited. Yeah. So here we go. Abba. Abba Sala. Derese. Kele Masa. Endeseke. Dese Kele Le Masata. Emberete. Dese Ele Meseke. Embeshete Kele Masa. Emberetusu Kirini Masa. Kala Na Maseke Te Kereche. Embeseke Le Masa. Now, I'm feeling that. I'm not worried about you. I'm feeling that because that's between me and God. Now, if anybody else doesn't feel it, I'm okay. I do this because I want to teach you. So now, you may have tried to stay up and fell behind. We're going to do it again. But this time, if you fall behind and you can't say the words, just make something up. God knows your heart. He knows why you're doing it. He knows why you're doing this. You want to get closer to him. You want to learn this, right? You have all the gifts already. You might as well walk in it. Holy Spirit's looking at you like, yeah. He has this. He's stepping out in faith. He's believing that he can do this. And that's really what growth is about. Okay? So this time I'm going to do it again. And if you fall behind, just make something up and catch up. No problem. Okay? Ready? So we'll start off again. Ready? So, Abba, Abba Lassa, Eretese, Endeshe, Kerete Masa, Embe Kelereshe, Tere Kelele Masa. And the sec le la basse, and the que le bas, tele que se que le te sheke le le massa. And be que le ma, et te se le que se te rete. And the rimasa cara la masse, que te sheke le le masse, and be te rese. Ambassa, pereso curota saca la la sheke ne me se que le le. He me se que le le. Tu sucuro no masse, and the masse que le se se le que me te rete. Hambalaka, hembele to sulu, kuru su kili masata ke se kele le masa. Hembele ke se ke. Tere se kala masa, embete se kele le se kele masa. Kini maha, te ke se abanama. So, if you want to keep doing that, you can rewind it a little bit, right? And you can do that again, right? And then do it again, and do it again, until you feel comfortable. Okay, and the best time to do this, <laughs> the best time to do this is in the morning, right? Whenever, whenever, you, wake, whenever you wake up, just get up in the morning and, and just talk to God because you're really praising Him because you just woke up and it's an amazing day and you're ready for an adventure and you want the world to see how amazing God is in your life and you just get up and you just start praising Him and you start talking to Him because God loves you and He's for you and He wants you to have an amazing day. He wants you to smile. Holy Spirit is in you. He's embedded in you. He can't escape you because He's, he's committed to you, right? So guys, if you want to rewind it and do that again, it's okay. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed, okay? I will pray in tongues, I will sing, I will dance, I will run, I will shout, I will do whatever this body does not want to do because this is a living sacrifice and this body is given to my Lord. It's given to Him. My body is not going to dictate what I'm going to give Him. And the reality is Jesus deserves your best. He deserves your best. Why not give it to him? I mean, he gave his best. So rewind it and go through it again. And remember, people are going to talk trash, but who cares? You're not doing it for them anyway. You're doing it for God because God loves you. Gosh, he loves you, man. I can just shake you. He loves you. <laughs> so um, guys, it's funny because when I was praying in tongues, I'm saying, Lord, let them get this. Let them get this. You're so beautiful. They can't deny themselves of this beautiful gift that you have. 
I'm saying this in my heart, like just let them, let them break that mold, let them, let them push that wall, let them go through the wall, let that flesh just fall off and let them just, just, mm. and you know, sometimes I sing, you know, like there's a song called, uh, I love you Lord and I lift my voice, right? And so I don't know all the words, so I just sing in tongues, you know? Abarama elehuma hurima. It just sounds, man. But man, my heart's there, so it don't even matter. And you can just sing songs like that. I learned that in China, because they were singing in Chinese, and I didn't know the words. So I just started singing with them in tongues, and they're like, oh, you know the song? I'm like, yeah, I know the song. <laughs> they're like, wait, those aren't the words. It doesn't matter, because a song isn't the words. The song is what's coming out of your heart. People write songs out of their heart. I just sing out of my heart. I don't even need to write it down. So, you know, he gives it the desires of your heart. And guess who lives there, right? Jesus lives there. So his desire is your desire. So, guys, please, please, just send this to someone, right? Send this to someone that says, hey, I don't believe in speaking in tongues, yada, yada, yada. And when I... I'm okay with that. So um, if you like this, hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. I love you guys in the name of Jesus. The School of Identity and Lifestyle. Yeah, the best gospel preached is the one lived. My book is out. The workbook called Back to Basics. If you want to get it, go to www.petecabrerajr.com. Click on the store. Bam. So anyways, if you want to come to the school, www.royalfamilyinternational.com. Dot com. Click on the school. We're doing an all women's school in June. Um, so guys, I love you guys in the name of Jesus. If this helped you, send it to somebody.